Friends Forever by Shannon Hale. Salt Lake City, Utah. In 1987, Brian Jr. High, 7th and 8th graders. And this year, I was in 8th grade. I had more friends than I ever had in my life. Like Jane. I know her in elementary, but we became best friends in junior high. So, can you sleep over on Saturday? My mom said yes. How about we start the day right off? And start right off with drama. And Andre. We met in seventh grade drama class and became best friends. But we were definitely not a thing. There she is, don't look, don't be so obvious. Besides, he was obsessed with a ballerina girl, Christy. I was also best friends with Olivia from drama and Heather from drama. And basically, jazz hands, everyone from drama. Jazz hands. It was a relief to be an eighth grader, finally one of the older kids. Seventh grade had been hard at times. Seventh grade losers. I broke away from my sixth grade friend group and signed up for different classes from them, like drama. I was desperate to make new friends. Hi Grace, hi Brandon, hi my tail. So even if I was nervous, people might think I was too pushy or needy, I decided to say hi to everyone. Hi. Hey. I was afraid to be trapped in a single friend group again. In classes where we didn't have a seating assignment, I sat at different desks every day so we could get to know more people from different groups. Seven classes, seven teachers. Junior high was a lot to get used to. On Saturday, we were going to see Top Gun at Crossroads Mall. Everyone's invited. My old friends probably would have only invited the popular kids. I felt proud of myself. And it worked. I made new friends. By 8th grade. See you tomorrow, Shannon. I feel like I finally had real friends. And I had gotten the hang of junior high. I thought I should finally feel good. But I didn't always. I didn't know why. Maybe now that things were getting pretty... Well, I was just feeling restless. Impatient. In 8th grade, there were so many things I wanted to do, and do well. Author workshop, picture day, science fair, student of the month, creative problem solving competition, a straight aid student, literary magazine editor, practice violin, concert solo editions, drama showcase, play editions, earn money for Christmas presents, babysit more. But could I? You're not good enough. Is that you, Shannon? How was your day? Fine. You don't sound fine. Does something happen? No, it's just... I don't know, whatever. Remember, everyone makes their own good time. If you're not having a good time, then you're not trying. Okay. I feel bad for feeling bad. Despite all my friends, I was only totally honest with my journal. August 31st. 8th grade is going to be pretty good, but in less than a year, I'll be in high school. I won't be a kid anymore, and I still don't feel like I'm supposed to be. This is the year where I need to do everything and just try harder to feel better. I would feel fulfilled if I could be 1. Beautiful, 2. Famous, 3. Successful, 4. Liked by boys, and 5. A good person. Chapter 1 Jane and I made up our own slang. This is so duck. I know, it's totally sheep. We figured it was just like random as real slang, like tubular and bodacious. Girls, what is your first task after you receive the ball? You look around. I spy with my little eye. And then she just started clipping her nails on the bedroom floor, like without a garbage can or anything. Ew. My cousin is grody. Jane, you look so pretty. No way, I'm hideous. Guess what, you're beautiful. 
Hi, Shannon. Hi. You'll never be as pretty as Jane. Where's Andre? Now, Shannon, what is the first step when looking for a friend? I spy with my little eye. What are you guys doing? Have you seen Christy today? Yeah, she's in our gym class. What does she look like today? Is she still mind-boggling gorgeous? Tell me everything. Dude, take a chill pill. He has no chill pill. It's true, I have no chill pill. Christy, oh beautiful Christy, where are you? Oh my gosh, he's such a nerd. Sit down. Do you think she'll love me one day? Of course she will. Just not today, probably. So what are you wearing for picture day? Wearing? Picture day is still a month away. Is everybody already planning for it? I've got the cutest denim jacket I'm embroidering. School pictures are so permanent. If I want to be beautiful, I'd better get on it. In all these stories, the guy falls for the girl at first sight, and then he'll do anything for her. Shannon! Coming! She matters because she's beautiful. Ever since I lost my glasses in sixth grade, I had to squint to see things far away. I tried not to complain so my mom wouldn't take me to get new ones. In movies, girls aren't beautiful till, t till they take their glasses off. But my mom decided I was finally old enough to get contacts. Let's practice putting in the contacts. But first, you should clip those long nails. Um, I need a garbage can. Isn't cutting them over the floor super gross? I heard how snarky my voice sounded. And I saw the doctor's lips tighten. I wasn't trying to be rude. I just remembered what Jane said about her cousin, and I was trying to sound mature, to pretend that I'd known all along. But I feel too embarrassed to explain, or apologize. It was hard to keep my lids open while poking my eyeball with a foreign object. Finally got them in. How does it feel? Ow. She'll get used to it. I'll get used to wearing dinner plates on my eyeballs. I did get used to them though, and now I could see. Notice anything different about me? Um, you trimmed your bangs? Even though I could see, that didn't change how people saw me. I didn't have long to feel pretty-ish in my new contacts before another doctor was shoving metal braces on my teeth. Ow! I wanted this big change to make me feel special somehow. Hey Shannon, you got braces. What was it like? Tell us everything. But in junior high, braces were as common as zits. Plus, I only had braces on my top four teeth. So my long, pointy teeth were super visible. Oops, watch it. Hey, look at her teeth. Yeah, she has fangs. Hey, Fang. I wished I was like this. That's right, I'm Fang. You better watch out, because I'm Fang. But instead, I felt ugly and stupid. Hey, what's up? You got braces. I'm glad I was done with braces in fifth grade, so nothing gets in between me and my kissing plans. Not like that's an issue for me. I swear, Denise is always wearing some new outfit. It seemed like girls were expected to be pretty. Ah, uh, look at Stacy. All that makeup, who is she trying to impress? Michelle spends an hour getting ready every morning. I'm not even kidding. Did you notice how Gina always looks at herself in the bathroom mirror? But it was shameful to actually try to be pretty. Do you always have braces? No, I just got them, doofus, and they hurt. You're lucky, my mom can't afford braces. I'm not gonna have shrank my teeth my whole life. No, you look fine. No, who looks fine? Ugh. Did you see Chrissy today like an angel? Andre, you have a one-track mind. A beautiful angel. Hang on, there's another call. I need to answer in case it's my dad. 
Wait, you have a call waiting now? And braces? You're so rich and fancy. Okay, okay. Hello? Shannon, it's Jane. Have you figured out what you're wearing for picture day yet? Church, midweek activity for teen girls. So I invited my fabulous hairdresser, Leo, to come talk to you about the latest styles. Any volunteers? Now, there's nothing wrong with a basic ponytail held up by a scrunchie. But don't hold back, you can have fun. Crimp curl permit. Tease those bangs. Maybe I should make an appointment with him and do something with my hair before school pictures. Oh, you would look so cute if you had hair like that one actress. I knew who she meant. There was an actress on TV who had red hair like me, but weren't in the most beautiful coarse screw curls. It was 1987 and big hair was beautiful. Each night before bed, I read my scriptures, say my prayers, please forgive me for talking to Olivia during algebra and for being mean to Cynthia and for not apologizing to my mom in a nicer way and for not volunteering to put away the chairs at church and for, and then with the lights still on, I'd lie down and imagine things. The magical makeover van? What's it doing at Brian Jr. High? We're here for you, Shannon. Me? But why? Because you're special. You're already beautiful, Shannon. We just need to bring out those fabulous natural beauty. Huh? What? Wow, whoa, look at her! Who is that? I think that's Shannon. I didn't even recognize her. She's so, so beautiful. Can I get a new haircut? Haircut? You just had a trim last month. But I want to go to a salon and get a style for picture day. I don't know. A salon sounds expensive. We usually got our haircuts at the beauty school because it was cheap. Please, pretty please. I'll think about it. Stop it! Stop what? She's acting like I'm all conceited and selfish just because I want a haircut. You'd be a lot happier if you could just let things roll off you. I think my favorite sisters are Laura and Wendy. Uh, why would you say that? I'm your only other sister. Oh, yeah. Daddy! Laura, have you done your homework? I'm literally doing it right now. Good. How come you didn't ask Shannon? I don't have to. She always does her homework. If I wore just the right outfit, would that change how people saw me? But I didn't want to look like I was trying too hard. Simple clothes, nothing fancy. My body was changing, but slowly, I so I didn't notice. Mom, did this shirt shrink in the wash? It feels tight. I don't think you've worn it in a while. Ugh, your breath stinks. When you wear shorts, you really should shave your legs. I was changing. But junior high felt like this place where everything was permanent. Once you were known for something, no one ever forgot. There's Maxi Pad. Hey, Maxi Pad. Last year, a pad fell out of her backpack. Booger Boy, Booger Boy. I guess Booger Boy had a visible booger at one point. Hey, Smelly Mel. One time, he smelled. Also, his name was Aaron. To avoid being stink breath, I started to chew pieces of mint gum between classes. I went through a lot of gum. Cute shirt. Really? I think it might be too small. Unless you're just showing off your hot bod. I'm never wearing this shirt again. Class focus. You should be reading page 15. Wait, I think I feel something on my nostril. Was that a booger? Do I have a booger hanging out of my nose? If I use my finger to check, I might look I'm actually picking my nose. But I can't feel my nose as well in the back of my hand. 
I've got to go to the back room. Super itchy nose. Feels like a massive social life ending booger. Definitely something there. Nothing. I start to carry a tiny mirror just to check my nose between classes. Nothing. No burger, boogers. And then try not to touch my nose for the rest of the time. Hey! Uh, what's the matter? Nothing? Why? It was strange how I feel great with my friends one minute. Hey, Tony. You look so cute. And then the next, I feel worried that I didn't fit in. I was painfully aware of all the things I thought were wrong about me. Thanks, you too. So I was so sure that everyone else was noticing them too. Your hair is a cool color. So I thought I'd better own up to my own defects before anyone had a chance to point them out. Ah, oh, it's so straight. You're so skinny. Skinny like a skeleton, right? But watch out for a skeleton, girl. You did good on that test. I'm such a nerd, I know. She thinks you're full of yourself. Should be smarter than you are. Not pretty enough. Never kissed anybody. Do boys even like you? Too straight. Eyelashes are too pale. Freckles out of style. Body does not look like Jane's. The more time I spent looking at myself, the worse I felt. Please, 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 picture day is soon. And if I don't get my hair done, fine, okay. You two can have full, wet, kissable lips. This salon looked way more expensive than the beauty school. But I guess that my mom wanted to be wanted me to be beautiful too. So what are we doing today? Um, I don't know. How do you want your hair to look? Amazing, beautiful, special, drop dead gorgeous. Well, my hair is so straight. When I want it curly, I have to sleep in rollers. But it seems like coarse good curls are prettier than ringlets. So you want a perm? And let's cut some more bangs to play with. This was it. It was finally happening for me. Nobody said a wow when I entered that school. Hey, Nicole. Nicole was the one elementary friend I still hung out with. But she kind of ignored me when we were at school. Not good enough. Jane, there you are. Hey. So, notice anything about me? Did you get a haircut? Yeah, I did. Oh, I thought so. Do you like it? Yeah, it's cute. Yeah, it turns out my hair doesn't take a perm very well. I wanted quirks who curls, but instead I had a ha hair foot of ramen noodles. And my bangs won't stay up, so I kept spraying them and now they're all crusty with hairspray. Plus my braces and fang teeth, I bet I look hideous. Don't say that. You look cute for real. Thanks. Do I look okay? Definitely. Okay, it's just that a yearbook photo is so permanent, you know? Yeah. Well, if you want to redo your school picture, I'll take you to J.C. Penny. Yes, please. Say cheese. Do you feel better about these? Sure. No. Hello? Hey, it's Shane. What's up? Nothing. I hate my school pictures. Tell me about it. I look like an overreacher chipmunk. Matt is being a jerk and, I, and I'm sad. And you're the only person who ever cheers me up. That's because I'm duck? Totally duck. I didn't feel beautiful. I didn't even feel close. But I decided to pretend I didn't care. And focus on other ways to achieve my dreams. Chapter 2 I wish you'd just announce what the school play will be. I know I'm dying. Olivia King, please report to the office. That's Olivia King, please report to the office. Thank you. What do they want with you? I don't know. Better find out. Maybe she's getting in trouble for what happened yesterday. Yesterday, Olivia was wearing plastic shorts. And they were super popular. But they had elastic wristbands. Young lady, that is inappropriate.
but it wasn't her fault. I can't believe it. she got yelled at for getting pantsed. Hey, it wasn't nice when you pantsed Olivia. Wow, thanks for the insight. What's your name anyway? Um, Shannon? Hey, Shannon, you're really pretty. Psych. Like, wow. What a great A jerk. Guess what? That was my agent. I got the part. Olivia had a talent agent who got her for an audition for a national TV commercial. My agent said it's a three-day shoot, so I'm going to have a miss a lot of school. Olivia looked so happy. If Olivia could become an actress, maybe I could too. If I was famous, I'd feel confident, like I was covered in armor. My agent says this job will be open doors for more opportunities in TV, maybe even the cast of a show. That's so rad, Olivia. Totally radical. Oh, maybe I could audition for your agent too. Some of those shows might, shows might be looking for a redhead. Don't even bother. They're so alias that McGovern. I barely walked in the door and they're like, nope, you don't have the look. Oh yeah, I'm sure you're right. That's why Diego and I joined GNN Talent. They're not as fancy as McGovern, but at least they send me some additions. Do you think I should audition at GNN? That'd be cool, but I don't think they're looking for new clients right now. I had no armor. The littlest comment pierced me. I was an oyster without a shell, a shaved bear. I was so anxious for someone to see some anything special in me. So it felt like a huge deal when my history teacher nominated me to be chosen Brian's student of the month. Only one girl and one boy would be chosen. Christy's so much better than you. You don't have a chance. Either that leftover pizza I had for lunch was bad, or I was so nervous I gave myself a stomach ache. Good luck. You too. Shannon, you're up. Even though I longed, longed my teacher to notice me, once they did, all I wanted to do was hide. The Brian Student of the Month is Award is the way to honor students who aren't just outstanding in their studies, but in their lives outside of school too. Your nominating teacher was Mr. Powell, and he says that you're the best student he had in years. Really? Wow. Mr. Temple, do you have any questions? Sure. What would you say is your greatest achievement? Um, well, I've been taking violin lessons since I was five. But you don't really like it and you're not really good at it. And I try to do well in school, but so does everyone else, so, that's an, so that doesn't make you special. Also, I like to write. I've been writing stories since, grade, since fifth grade. Mostly about girls with superpowers who go on adventures and do amazing things. That sounds fantastic. Thanks, I'm writing a novel. My goal is to be a published author. Writing a novel? That's get, that gets an A plus for me. We didn't know who won until the assembly a week later. Announcing our students of the month? When she called my name, it felt like a daydream. Please give Shannon and Timmy a big round of applause. These two students are exemplary in every way. One of the biggest, the best, proudest moments of my life. I called the parents to ask for amusing stories about them. Oh no. Shannon's dad said that when she was little, they went hiking. Shannon cried and cried, and they didn't know why until they finally discovered she had a cactus needle in her knee. I don't know why my dad always tells that story. It's so boring. He also told me how she recently came home from school crying. And he asked her what's wrong. She said, I got a B plus in my test. But it wasn't crying. I used to cry a lot, but I actually haven't lately. Be nice. The story just shows Shannon committing to be a good student. Timmy's mother told me about the time when he was three and lost in a grocery store. Please just stop. When the manager called on the loudspeaker, no, no, no. 
he said, will Tammy's mother please collect her daughter? Because with his beautiful blonde hair, he thought Timmy was a girl. Hey, Tammy. Hi, Tammy, girly. Nerd. Now quiet down. I still wanted to be famous, but not like this. Shannon. Hey, congrats. Yeah, congrats. Hey, did you notice that in both of your dad's stories you were crying? Yeah, I did. Hey, good job. I think Chrissy would have, should have won, of course, but you were my second favorite. I know, I know. The guy who booed you is a jerk. You want me to take care of him for you? <laughs> no, that's okay. Oh, good, because I'm sure he'd kick my butt. Call you tonight. Later, dude. Boo-hoo, fangarabi. Nerd. Even though I felt like my novel was my greatest accomplishment, didn't write a word unless it's perfect. If you mess up, everyone will laugh at you. Write better if you want to be a famous author. I hadn't been able to write a new chapter for a long time. Instead, I worked on short stories for creative writing class. The bus of the school crowd was almost too much for the frail, hair, fair-haired 13-year-old girl. Oh, I make long to be barefoot among aspens, alone in the shade of trees and long dewy grass. Look at her shabby cotton dress, said a student who was stomping by her. Meg tried not to care. Her daydreams would keep her running until she could be alone and sing. Since her mother died, Meg had learned to hide her emotions. She lived in her own private world, where no one could ever hurt her again. When school was out, Meg ran as fast as she could and then slowly, cautiously entered a park. She was so happy to be surrounded by aspens again. She did the only thing she could do to let her, her emotions. Her voice rang out above the canopy of tree tops. I'm sorry, said the girl. I didn't mean to intrude, but that was the most beautiful song I've ever heard. No one had rather ever heard Meg sing before. No one. It had ha kept her going, and now she doubted that she could ever sing again. Wait, said the girl, please wait. My father owns an opera company, and I think they would be perfect for this part of a girl in it. It's one of the main characters. The girl led Meg to the opera house. Meg's stomach rolled over, but her blood ran cold. Her legs felt like rubber, and she couldn't make the ru them run away. You can audition for my dad, said the girl. Don't worry, just pretend you're in the park. I know you can do it. Meg opened her mouth, but nothing came out. So Meg closed her eyes and imagined she was under the aspens, singing by the cheerful creek. She thought she could almost hear her mother's silvery voice along her own. Her powerful song drowned out the world. For never had she sung more beautifully. Besides creative writing, Drama was my safe haven. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely prayers. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in this time plays many parts. Thank you, Billy. You've passed your Shakespeare soliloquy. Next up is Shannon doing the Simon of Wordless humor scene. Shannon, are you still in the kitchen? We're waiting for the cake. That was so funny. Really? Thanks, Olivia. In my family, my older sisters were the funny ones. And then she just starts scruffing her face with cake. <laughs> it felt amazing to know that I could be funny too. Being an actress or a writer, being famous, 8th grade was full of possibilities. Next week, a re-owned author and novelist will visit us and talk to us about our writing fiction. I've given him your latest stories and he will read them and give you personal feedback. A real author, in our class. My daydreams took me away. After reading all your stories, there's one standout that I long to share. Make stay close to the harsh red brick wall. It seemed the safest place. Wait, he's reading my story. For never had she sung more beautifully. The end. And the person who wrote this moving story is Shannon. 
this is the young writer I was telling you about. Of course, welcome to New York, Shannon. You are very special, Shannon. It, it is so rare to, ha- to find so much talent in someone so young. I want to offer you a million dollar contract to write books. Alas, all my dreams are coming true. The day finally came. The author looked sort of like I imagined. He reads us a short story he'd written. Bobby took a couple of practice swings out of his bat. The air whistled past his ear. Didn't fidget. Don't look away. Don't blink. So he can see that you're serious about writing. Meeting a real author made my goal feel possible. Then he answered our questions. Do you know the author V.C. Andrews? No. Do you know C.S. Lewis? He's been dead for over 20 years. How do you become a writer? Well, you write. But you do other stuff too. It's very hard to make a living out of writing books. Are you a millionaire? I make a few cents for each paper book I sold. So I'd have to sell 20 million books to make a million dollars. And no, I haven't sold a fraction of that. Then he passed back our stories. Oh, he just marked spelling errors. There was one note on the last page. Shannon, you write extremely well, but be careful not to write purple passages, overwriting, being corny, or pushing emotions too hard. Understatement is more effective than overstatement. Not good enough. I know I shouldn't feel bad. He did say I write well, and it's not like I expect him to say I was the best writer or anything. It's just that it's my dream. I used to want to be a writer too. Yeah, everybody does. Then we grow up. I knew Heather wasn't trying to be mean. She always said the first thing she thought. And I was learning to play the part I thought I could. A cool girl who didn't get offended or never felt bad. You can nag and yell all you want, old lady. But you'll never be my real mother. Listen up, girl, and listen good. Your mother is dead and I'm all you got. Dead? Then it's really true. I'm really all alone. Girl, stop being so stubborn. Let me love you. You're right. Mama Goods, you, you're my family now. Wow, Olivia, that was amazing. You're so good. Thanks, Shannon. I'm really glad you came. Hey, I heard you got Trish in addition with your agent. Yeah, and he signed her. Denies and Billy are a rep to there now, too. I would totally recommend you, too, but he's close editions again. Oh, that's okay. N- no big deal or anything. Am I the only drama kid without an agent? Why does Olivia get to do all this and not me? I'm such a bad person for feeling jealous. I should be happy for her. I am happy for her. But can't I just be happy for her? Why can't I just be happy? I would try to bury my dreams, but I just couldn't stay hopeless. What if I could make it? What if... Do you want me to audition? Do a monologue or something? No, with the acting classes you're taking in junior high, I'd say you're already qualified. First I'll be needing 35 billing fee- 35? I can pay you back with babysitting money. I didn't realize we need to pay you. It's standard. We just gotta call the cast actors for crowd scenes in Rocky Five, and she will earn fifty to three hundred dollars per day. Plus, Uda sees a lot of made-for-TV movies commercials. Soon they'll be filming Halloween Five. Wow. Next, she'll need headshots. For just two hundred dollars, our in-house photographer can take them and even do her hair up, hair and makeup. Just look at the great work he's done for other clients. Whoa, I wish I could come here for pictures someday. How would a director even know what she looks like under all that makeup? Mom, they're professionals. I'm sure they know what they're talking about. Well, I'll have to talk to my husband about the photo session. 
On Monday at school, I couldn't wait to tell everyone. Shannon, sit by me, you fabulous goddess you. I'm not as fabulous as you, you gorgeous creature. So on Friday, I got a talent agent. Cool. Did you get an addition of McGovern after all? Actually, I'm represented by men and women talent agency. Men and women? Are they by the mall? Yeah. No way, I saw them on the news last night. They're totally fake. Fake? Yeah, the reporter burst in and was all like, have you ever booked a job for even one of your clients? Why do you take the money? Is it a scam? And then the agent just ran away. It wasn't a real agency all along. That's so bogus. Ah, huh, looks like Shannon got taken for a ride. Then the strangest thing happened. My heart started pounding so loudly until suddenly nothing. The ground seemed to fall away. I felt like my body was gone. I was disconnected from everything. Sitting, floating, unable to move or think, completely alone. When I could think and move again, I realized I was literally all alone. My friends were gone. How long had I been sitting there, completely numb? Had they spoken to me? If they had, I didn't hear it. Maybe I looked like I was ignoring them. I felt scared and confused. How could I explain what had happened? Would anyone believe me? They were probably embarrassed to be sitting with an untalented girl who could only get in a fake agent. If you make any mistakes, you'll lose all your friends forever. Hey Jane, you okay? Yeah, sometimes everything is the worst. Yeah, we should eat a lot of chocolate. Okay. I didn't sleep much that night. I was sure I'd go to school the next day. And discovered that they were, that they all would despise me. Um, Heather, is anyone sitting there? Nope, it's all you. Maybe they were distracted by the big news. I have copies of the edition parts here. Who wants one? I didn't get cast in the school play last year, but almost no 7th graders did. 8th grade had to be my year. Suddenly, my friends were my competition. Hi Shannon, want to have lunch today? Please don't say we're having lunch with Olivia. Right back, Jane. Sorry, I can't. I'm practicing for the school play editions during lunch all week. What's wrong with O? I hope you make the play. You can act really well, so you should. But I haven't seen the other people. Well, good luck anyway. I'm in math. Mr. S was hit in the eye with a racquetball. So you have to sub all week. I heard O was saying all kinds of stuff about me. But I don't even care. Right back. P.S. Do you like anyone? WB meant right back. If a teacher ever left to the classroom, it instantly became a zoo. Ew, stop it. Hey, cut it out. She said cut it out, so now you cut it out. Yeah, nobody wants your disgusting guinea bits of blobs all over the class. Well, just stop while you're behind, champ. So revolting, seriously. Way to be a scuzz. Don't spit at anyone else either. Whatever. So grody. Gag me with a fork. I just loved my friends so much. You guys want to come over after school and practice for the audition? I wanted to make the place so badly. I would have traded everything I owned for a part. What you mean by that, Mr. Lafferty? It's all a setup, that's what I mean. How dare you? No, how dare you? Everything I owned was basically a closet of hand-me-downs, a symmetric animal collection, and a few stuffed animals, but still. I practiced every day for a week, until I finally got to audition. How dare you? No, how dare you? The cast list would be posted next morning. It was a long night. Olivia, Olivia, you made it. You got the part of the younger sister. Olivia's the little sister? Yes, and you're the mom. What about you? Oh, Shannon, it's okay. Don't cry. Buck up, Shannon. 
Yeah, everything will be okay. Smile. Um, there was a note on the cast list to come see you. Sorry you didn't get a part. I know you worked very hard. You were the only additioner who memorized the lines. Yeah. I'd like you to be the student director. So, I'll help direct the play? Well, I'll direct, but you'll be there, in case I need your help, okay? Sure. What? Being student director meant going to early morning rehearsals. Thanks, Dad. Just don't let all the rehearsals get in the way of your homework. I won't. And the after, her s after school rehearsals. Horace, you didn't, um, line? You didn't stash the bags where, you didn't stash the bags where I said. How does the scene look? And what's this then? Great, you're so funny. During the performance, I ran the sound effects table. Ringing phone in three, two, one. Horace, that's the phone ringing again. I came out after each performance for the curtain call. And I helped plan the closing night party. Help me on a stage. All the world's a stage, and we're merely the actors. Romeo, Romeo, where they are they, Romeo? Yo, I'm over here. After working so hard together, it felt like we'd bonded for life. Like we all would be best friends forever. When I helped strike the set, there were a few minutes when I was alone in the auditorium. The stage seemed almost alive, like a sleeping dragon. I put my hands on the floor and imagined I could feel the past performers. Maybe I didn't need to be famous. Maybe it was enough just to be a part of it. And maybe someday, it would be my turn to be on the stage too. Chapter 3 Summer Before 8th Grade Oh my gosh, did you notice that cute boy? No, where? Don't look. Hey. Um, hey. So you're just hanging out or, yeah, you know, swimming or whatever. Do you want to hang out behind the tube rentals? Sure, so Shen, could you? Yup. Being Jen's friend meant standing guard while she's hanging out with boys she met at water parks and baseball games and amusement parks. Everywhere we went, boys were looking at Jane. Oh, what was the guy's name? Um, I can't remember, that's so funny. Are boys always checking out her body? If I had a body like Jane's, would boys notice me too? But if I did, how could I be sure they would like me and not how I looked? The only thing I'm sure about is that right now, no guys like me. What are you thinking about? Nothing. When 8th grade started, it seemed like everybody was going with someone. Going with is what we called when two people were a couple. And the people who weren't going with anybody wanted to be. Am I next? It would be kind of exciting to have a boy to think about. I'm not sure if I'm ready to go out with someone. Do I want to be next? Or would I have to kiss him? I don't know if I want to kiss anybody yet. If boys paid attention to me, maybe I'd, maybe I'd feel how Chrissy must feel. Adored, loved, happy. Did Matt call you back last night? No, he's such a loser. Are you still going with him? I don't even know. It seems like everybody is going with somebody except me. Who do you want to go with? I don't know. Who would you think I should like? There is nobody good. All the boys in the school are jerks. I just wish somebody liked me. I heard Steven does. Heather said that too, but he doesn't count. He's smart and he thinks I'm smart. But that doesn't really know me. We've never even talked. If he actually knew me, he wouldn't like me. What about Andre? No way, we're just friends. Andre and I sat in the same seat in biology. Animals are given different Latin names according to their genesis and species but in different periods. A wolf is called Lapus, Lapus. Isn't that silly? Hi, Andre. I hope science is exciting for you as it is for me. Do not ask Mr. Herman if we have to do the assignment. Tim did, that. Tim did it and got yelled at right back. Shannon, I got Jane to have a little talk with. You guessed it, Christy. 
she said she likes me but doesn't want to go with me for reasons I only want known to a woman since you're kind of a woman maybe you'd know I'm madly in love with her of course there I wrote you Andre the not giant did you leave me a reply yep lucky the janitor never checks the bottom of the tables so are you two going together or something nope we're just best friends Andre hey how are you I'm in science. Of course we're watching another stupid movie. All I want to do is eat french fries. I'm dying. Right back. Shannon. Dang. The bell is ringing and I forgot to write you. Sorry. P.S. Chrissy staring at me during English and I was about to go crazy. Don't laugh. P.P.S. Tell her today out of your own will that Andre sure is cool. Please don't laugh. Okay, so I told Kay that you were cool. And she said, yeah, he's nice. Should we go to a movie this weekend? Right back. P.S. My name has three ends total. Shannon. Well, you asked me to write you back, so here's a note. Remember to ask Christy if she likes me as a friend or if she wants to go with me. Andre. I got a huge fight with my sister last night, and I'm so tired I think I'm writing this in my sleep. What movie do you want to see? P.S. Maybe write me about something besides Christy? Shannon. Okay, we're all in a big circle talking about popping zits. Exciting, huh? P.S. You didn't answer my question. Did you ask Christy? Fuss called Gina last night and didn't tell me. I'm so mad. I don't even want to go with him anymore. Hi, my name is Andre. I drink surfing walks on the beach and meet at dinners. Yeah, that's a good line. I'm going to go try it on Christy. Do you and Andre go together? No, we're just friends. Shannon, are you and Andre going together? Nope, just friends. Are you and Andre- We're just friends. I wasn't in love with Andre or anything. I wasn't dying to go with him. But I feel like everyone expected it. Like, there was something wrong with me if we weren't going together. There's something wrong with you. Everybody thinks so. In 8th grade, I couldn't escape all the boy-girl talk. It was just in, in about every no we were constantly passing to each other. Hey, dude, like, what's hanging? Well, I know for sure that Keith is a jerk. I'm going to die sudden alone. If my mom packs me a muffin for lunch, let's share and cry together. See you later. Right back, Trish. Shannon. I heard from someone that Jane begged Willow to line her up with one of her boy cousins, and that they went hot tubing. Is that true? You seem to be really good friends with her, and I was wondering if it was true. Oh, I look so ugly today. No wonder Fuzz ca is calling Gina instead of me. Right back, Olivia. Hi Shannon. So how are you? I'm great. You know what Chad wrote to me today? He wrote, Denise, you look like Melanie today. Cool, huh? Melanie is supposed to be Maylene, my sister, who he's in love with. Wow, I just hope he doesn't get too close at me and my massive zit. Right back, Denise. Shannon, yes, I think I do love Jay. I don't think he likes me even as a friend. My next class is my favorite because he's in it. I wish so much that he would like me. Too much about me. I can't wait till Friday in the concert. My sister says he she'll drop us off and we can get a ride home. Whoop. Jane. Jane, Monica, and I saved up our money and bought tickets to a concert. Monica, a friend from church, goes to a private school. There were no seats and we didn't dare squish our way up to the front. So we left early. How much just to drive us around the block? Five bucks. We spreaded the night with glee songs until Monica's brother and his friend came to pick us up. Monica's brother's friend looked familiar. Hey, I know you, you're Sunny's brother. I used to go to Sunny's school in seventh grade when we were working on a school project together. And you're Shannon. Wow, he remembered my name. We got into the biggest water fight at his sister's birthday party. Everyone else screamed and ran away, but Shannon and I got soaked. Hey, did you ever finish reading that trilogy? It was a trilogy? Oh yeah, you've, you've got to read the last book. We talked non-stop the whole drive. 
Does the wizard ever... I'm not telling you. You have to read it. You should convince your parents to let you sleep over at Monica so we can hang out tonight. Yeah, I'll try. Wow, he's 16 and way cool. And he seems to like me? Tell them you're doing homework or saving the world or something. Maybe I am likable. Maybe I'm not a total loser. I'm going to the back seat. Um... Does anybody want to join me back here? Preferably a boy. I'll take you up on that. You're such a goof. What about this? Is this better? Hun, nice slut try voice. You can drop me off first. Jane called me when she got home. Why'd you leave so fast? I was just done. What's your deal? Nothing. We were just goofing around. You're overreacting. I have to go. Later. At school on Monday, we acted like nothing had happened. See you at lunch? I'm meeting with Olivia and Heather. Tomorrow? Shannon. I'm in math class and Mr. S is talking about the assignment, which I finally did. Yay. Chrissy's being really cool. This weekend, I think we should get about six or seven people and get together at my house to watch a few films. I love you. Andre the Nod Giant. Jason, not in drama, sometimes goes with Jane. Come on, I'm starting the movie. I hope it's not a scary movie. Does anybody want to chain a beanbag with me? Sure. Oh no, this movie's gonna be totally scary. Are you okay? I invited Christy. She said maybe. Are they going to the closet? What the heck? Why are we the only ones watching this stupid movie? If you get scared, I'll protect you. Actually, this feels kinda nice. I've never crushed on Billy before, but sitting so close to him, I had so many feelings. Wait, do I like Billy? It was confusing. I should laugh a little so he doesn't think I'm mad at him. See, doesn't that tickle? Uh, that feels good. Look what your boy Jason brought. Thanks, dude. Alcohol? No, thank you. Blowfish on neck. Ah, oh, those drinks stink. Where's Jane? I don't know. How about we play strip poker? Um, no way. What is up with Billy? He doesn't act like this at school. This party blows. I wish Trish was here. He was cuddling with me and now he's talking about Trish? I want to call Trish. Like he's trying to make me feel bad? Yeah, but I thought... Billy, you're so swoony. Gross, get off me, Jason. What's going on? I'm leaving. Do you want to stay? No. I told Jane what happened with Billy. While he was trying to get you to make out with him. I doubt it. Why would Billy want to make out with me suddenly? Because he's a boy. Boys just want to make out with anybody. They don't care who it is. Jason was being gross. We were kissing in the closet, and then he kept trying to do more. What a jerk. I'm done with boys. You are? I don't know what's wrong with me. It's like boys are a drug and I'm addicted. I keep choosing terrible guys to like and I'm just... I'm over it. Well, boys only like me if I make out with them. What if I don't want to? I kind of want to kiss someone, but I kind of don't. Are there any boys who are different? I thought Jane must feel great because so many boys like her. Baby, it's not just me. Maybe worrying about boys is hard for all girls. I'm done with boys. It's over, boys. I loved Jane. She was the friend I could be totally immature with. We still played with these fuzzball characters we made when we were younger. We had sleepovers in her basement that smelled like dryer lint and loved and played Love, Mary Kill. When our glee performed at the Christmas tree festival, Jane and I put together a group number and our teacher picked us to perform.
Our prince was a stalker, so he changed out of our hideous choir uniforms and walked around. We should get a picture of that dude dressed up like fake Santa. We were too old to sit on Santa's lap, so we thought it would be funny. Oh, how old are you girls? Thirteen. But we still love you, Santa. I forgot to ask you what you want for Christmas. I want you, Santa. I didn't think about what I was saying. I was just trying to be funny. You don't know how much I want you. I was so shocked. The tension with the fake Santa hasn't felt good. It felt bad, scary, unwanted. Is he following me? Will he come after me? Did I do something wrong? Is he going to hurt me? Why did he do that? If I feel bad, does that mean I'm... I am bad? Gross, sick, so grody. What a scuzz. At first, we hid in the bathroom and freaked out. When we called Jane's mom to come pick us up, we didn't tell her what happened. I don't know why. It wasn't our fault that the fake Santa was a creep. I wish I'd known what to do, how to report the creepy man, what to say, how to feel about it. By the next day, mostly I felt angry. If you want to get by, you have to let me spank you. You're such a dirtbag. Is that what you think? Well, I think literally nobody cares what you think, Jason. Nobody. Face. I wanted boys to pay attention to me, but I also didn't want them to notice me all at the same time. Excuse me? Oh no, excuse me. All right, class, let's focus. Did you see Christy this morning? No. She's like an angel who walks on earth. Tell the truth, have you ever met a girl more perfect? Seriously, enough. I'd had it, I got up to move seats. And just like that, Andre and I weren't friends anymore. Even though I wasn't in love with Andre or anything, was I still sad that he didn't like me? Or maybe I just got tired of constantly hearing about how Christy is the perfect girl and worrying about how I wasn't perf a perfect girl for anyone. Jesus knows me and he loves me. Some days, this felt like enough. But Jesus loves everybody, so that does me, doesn't make me special at all. Why can't just one boy like me ever? And is there something wrong with boys? There have to be nice ones too. Heather had constant breakups. I wondered, would that feel better than having nothing? Hi Shannon, so it's over. And he's totally in love with Gina. Like every other boy in this stupid school. Right back, Heather. Just wait till next year. Gina is the type of girl that will date senior guys whilst she is still a freshman. And then all the senior girls will give her heck. I I'm sorry, that's rude, I shouldn't say that. You're right though, but what can I do? My love life couldn't get worse if I were a corpse in the morgue. I'm such a loser. You've gone with Billy and Speg and Diego. I've gone with zero guys. What does that make me? Spag was my friend. Billy was temporarily insanity. And Diego was a misunderstanding. You're better off than I am. I would give anything just to say that there were some boys in the school that actually think of me. It really hurts. Shannon, when all the others come back to the reunion with hair and pink curls and bunny slippers, you will be stunning. You have to grow into a real beauty. Thanks. We don't need boys to like us. We're independent women. Getting attention from boys was supposed to feel flattering, but sometimes it made me feel awful, sick to my stomach. And I didn't understand why. And all I felt was bad. Hi, did you know that Trish and Denise went to McDonald's for lunch? They're so lucky. I'm so ready for Christmas break. Are you excited about the Christmas dance? We have to be at Monica's at house at 6.30 cause some guy from her school is picking us up. I'm so bored. We're watching a video in Spanish. Dave is so gross. He's been farting behind me in all class period. And I'm in the middle of a spit bull fight between Gavin and John R. It's quite interesting. Well, I better go. See ya. Right back, Jane. Poodle skirts are 50s, not 60s. I didn't know. 
Monica invited me and Jane to go to the 1960s themed dance at our private school. Well, you look cute. Totally. You're such sweeties. It's pretty bad that we're going to be arriving at the dance with Anthony. He's like totally popular. Oh, do you like him? What? No way. But everybody else does, so... I didn't realize that Monica's Anthony was... Anthony Halverson. Hey, Shannon. I haven't seen you since the third grade. Right, are you still living on... Yeah, same house. You're so close. I can't believe I never see you. I didn't know Anthony goes to your school now. That's so cool. Yup. The boys at my school are so rude. This one guy, Chad, he says a woman would never be president because other foreign leaders wouldn't respect a woman leader. That's so stupid. I mean, hello, England just elected a woman prime minister for a third term. Did you see The Prince's Bride? Yes, that's my new favorite movie. Me too. All my friends thought it was stupid. Then they're stupid. No offense, I'm sure they're lovely human beings. Uh, jury's still out on that. Maybe you need new- Come on, let's go dance. Jane and I could be goofy together, anytime, any place. Maybe we're being too goofy. Usually, Monica had fun with us too. But I guess being immature at her own school was too big of a risk. Monica? Are you okay? Why did you even come? You're purposely trying to embarrass me in front of my friends. No, we're not. We're just dancing. Just leave her alone. Can we join you? I guess. You just can't act that way here. People are so judgy at this school. Just blame everything on me. I'll never see any of these people anyway again. I wonder where Anthony is. Do you like him? Um, well, yeah. Oh? Stop. He's over by the refreshments. Come on, let's walk around the back like we're getting food so we won't look like we're trying going there to see him. Okay, Jane? Oh, no, no. Just then, a slow song began. Hey, guys. Uh, so this food looks good? Come on, Shannon. What? Let's dance. Oh, okay. My first slow dance. Drop the napkin. This is amazing. This is so awkward. Where am I supposed to look? He's so cute and so nice. Oh no, does my breath stink? Remember in second grade how much you, how you used to throw snail shells at me? That was because I didn't know how to say I liked you. I suspect hitting girls with dead snails is the best way to show your affection. But that's my go-to move. I can't believe this is my first dance. Anthony is so sweet. Am I doing this right? Will this song never end? For real, I think my breath stings. Jane was usually the one slow dancing with boys, but she didn't dance with anyone that night. On the way home, Jade gave Anthony a phone number. But it wasn't her number. It was mine. I could barely sleep the night. I was too anxious. That dance had felt like such a huge deal. Something had to happen next. The next day was Christmas break, and I was home all day, waiting for Anthony to call me. Or maybe he'd just stop by. Who could that be at this hour? Hello, Shannon. Anthony, what are you doing here? I hope I'm not intruding. I couldn't stop thinking about you after our slow dance. I've never found anyone I could talk to before. You're really special. Will you... Will you go with me? Hello? Dad, telephone. Why aren't you doing your homework? Because it's Christmas break. Oh yeah. 
I've been hoping so hard, daydreaming so much, it just had to happen. Oh, to Anthony. I sit and stare, the window pane stained, with my breath, the frozen world outside, asleep. In thy absence, no matter how much I cry or how much I call, you do not appear, and so I wait. Anthony is so great, and I'm not. I don't think I'm worthy of him anyway. You don't have to sigh so loud. It's like you're trying to get everybody to think you're sad. Well, I am sad. Then get over it. You're not allowed to feel sad. If you feel sad, you're wrong. When I was a kid, stop being such a whiner. You're too sensitive. You need to let things roll off you. You're too old to act like this. Cry, baby. Being sensitive was a weakness. Feeling sad was a failure. I needed to buck up, let it go, move on, snap out of it, get over it, suck it up, smile. I daydreamed that, that once school started, I'd be gone with a guy from another school. I signed that I was liked, but without having to deal with boy drama every day, all day. But nope. Hi, Shannon. How was your new year? Are you and Andre still friends? I heard you got into a fight. Was he a jerk to you? Right back, Christy. Hi, Christy. Andre and I aren't really friends right now. I don't know why, but he's a really nice guy. Right back. Okay. Well, I just wondered because I thought he was nice, but I wasn't sure. Your hair looks really cute today, but I just feel so gross and ugly. You're never gross and ugly. You're beautiful. Why do you feel gross and ugly? I don't know. I always do. Sorry to whine on you. I'll shut up now. Have a great day. Smile. I ran into Anthony a little while later. I can't believe we must take transportation. Indeed. Olivia, Heather, and I like to stay in character on bus rides. I hope our heli private helicopter will be fixed soon. Shall we go riding later? Today our characters were rich. Steve said he will have our horses saddles for us upon our return. Oh my gosh, that's Anthony up there. The Anthony you told us about? Shannon? Anthony? Where are you headed? The mall. So, I haven't seen you since the dance. I tried to call you a couple times, but the line was either busy or you weren't home. Oh. Well, maybe we'll run into each other on a random bus again sometime. I hope so. Oh no. What are they saying? Stop talking to him. Heather was all, are you in love with Shannon? Why would you do that? But then he just said, I think she's cool. What? Yeah, he was all like, she's cool. I felt relieved that he had. That the dance has meant something to him. So my friend Olivia thinks you're cute. It felt amazing that someone I thought was cool felt I was cool too. But for now, I was just glad to be with my friends. When I, was, when I started junior high, I had been so determined to do everything right. It made my parents proud. My dad had me begin violin lessons in kindergarten. By seventh grade, I was finally getting good at it. Good job, Shannon. You even got the tricky part. Thanks. Great work, Shannon. I could tell you've been practicing since our last lesson. Almost every day. And she's getting a straight A's in school, too. We could set her up with Paul Miller. He has five kids. She might not mind. Shannon, when you're married and your kids are a little older, you could be a violin teacher. That's a great kind of job. You wouldn't take much time away from your family. I'm stinking proud of you, Shannon. I didn't really want to be a violin teacher. But when my parents were proud of me, it felt good. So I worked hard. Tried my best. But no matter how hard I worked, it never felt like enough. What if I could be really successful? What if I could be president? I'm gonna write for student body president. Awesome, what's your slogan? 
Sister Wendy lives in Los Angeles. Um, vote for me. How about Take a Walk in the Wild Side? Vote Shannon. Oh, I love that song. That sounds perfect. Hey, Jen, is this good? Yeah, good spot. Oh, hey, Shannon. Oh, no, Jen is running too. Hi, Jen. Do I even have a chance against Jen? Does she remember that we used to be best friends? Does she ever miss me? Would I be happier if I was still best friends with Jen? Jen had been the most popular girl in our elementary school. But I had a lot of friends of my own now that weren't part of her group. I could never be Jen. Could I? Your new school president is Shannon. Ooh, yay, go Shannon! Thanks, Mrs. H. And thank you for your trust in me. I know that junior high can be pretty stressful. I've come a long way since elementary school recess when I used to cry in the shrubbery, allegedly. And I'm here to help you. Less homework, no bullying, soda machines in the lunchroom. I spent the weeks before the election worrying and making new posters to replace the ones I, that were tore down. Hi, this is Shannon. Want to take a walk on the wild side? Vote for me. Practicing my campaign speech and worrying some more. The night before the election, I barely slept and I was so anxious. I forgot the music for my campaign speech. Attention students, we will now have the speeches from the candidates. Hey Jen, I was gonna play my campaign song, you know, take a walk on the wild side, but I forgot my music. Could I borrow your stereo to at least play some radio in the background? You're in competition. I'm not gonna help you. You're up. Um, hi, this is Shannon. I want us to have less homework and no bullying and soda machines in the lunchroom. Vote for me for student president and take a walk on the wild side. I've heard that. Everybody wants to rule the world. But I just want to be your president. Don't ask your school. What have you done for me lately? Just vote Jen and leave it up to me. Jen won, of course. I wish she would have won. Thanks, Olivia. But Jen is a good second choice. Since Jen is your friend too, one of us voted for you and one of us voted for Jen. To keep it fair. Oh, okay. Your friends don't think you can be su su successful. Nobody does. Thanks. If I had won the election, would I feel different in eighth grade? Better? More confident? Successful? Going out to dinner was a big deal in my family. We didn't do it very often. Dad, can I get the shrimp? You have expensive taste. When you grow up, you better marry someone rich. He said that a lot. He didn't know how it made me feel. What if I can make my own money? Dad seems to love me best when I'm successful. But at the same time, he assumes that I'll never really be successful. Does he think I'm not smart enough to have a successful career? Or is a girl not supposed to do that? Can only boys be important? Why is Laura glaring at me? Did I do something wrong again? Around my family, I tried to hide how I felt. Sometimes more successfully than others. I'm not afraid to work. There's a lot I like to do when I grow up. I really want to go to college. But at church, they tell us that a woman's most important responsibility is her family. If education interferes, then I'll have to give that up. I do want to marry, to get married and be a mom someday. But I also want more than that. Is that bad? I try to imagine a way. Welcome home, dear. Here are your slippers. Nope, not that future. Shannon, you've been so successful in your career, but to achieve that, you've had to neglect your family. Any regrets? Um, doing this interview? Hey, honey, I've got that interview this afternoon in rehearsal tonight. Can you pick me up and the kids from school? No problem. Thank you, mommy. Thank you. Looks like we've got everything figured out.
And you do? I love you so much. It's wonderful to feel so perfectly loved and fulfilled. At the mall of Jane, I found a sign that made me feel good. God created Adam before Eve. You always make a rough draft before final masterpiece. God made Adam before Eve? Whoa! Are you a man-hater? No, I, I just... I wasn't trying to say that boys were bad. I just wanted to feel like girls matter too. Check out Shannon's sign. <laughs> Shannon is a woman liver. What's a woman liver? The women's liberation movement is an alliance of people who support equal rights for women. Shouldn't women have the same rights as men? Why didn't Jason and Chad make it sound like a bad thing? For a speech unit, we'll hold a debate tournament. Come up and select your topic. No more taxes. Oh, I dubs the no junk food in schools one. Equal rights for women. In seventh grade, I competed on a creative problem solvers team of Chad. We took first place. I hope we're in the same team next year, both another boy. Why? Boys are better at analytical thinking than girls. If we had an all boys team, we could win at state. I thought it helped us win, but we were scored as a group, so I couldn't tell for sure. We spent weeks doing research for our debates. There's an article in here on equal rights amendment. Thanks. You know, I worked for years to put my husband through law school, and as soon as he graduated, he divorced me. I wanted to be a lawyer too, but by then I had two kids and couldn't afford to put myself through law school. Seems like women always get the short end of the stick. Alright, let's start our first debate. Employers pay women only 65 cents for every dollar they pen pay men who do the same job. Men need more money to support their families. Women need to support families too, sometimes. Then they should get married and let their husbands support them. But, but a women are better at taking care of kids and the home. Men should be the ones to have jobs because they're naturally smarter, inferitable, solid evidence that proves that men are better at math and science. That doesn't sound true, but I don't have any counter evidence in my notes. Women should have the same opportunities as men to choose what they want to be. If men gave women equal rights, then they might choose to leave home and have careers instead of families, and families are the bedrock of society. So men have both careers and families, but women only get a low-paying job for a family? That doesn't make sense. Thomas Jefferson wrote that all men are created equal. He should have said all people are created equal. Girls and women are as humans as men and should all have the same rights. If the equal rights ad amendment passed, then there would be no protections for women. They could be drafted to fight in wars and guys could just talk into the girls' back rooms. That wouldn't happen. Yes, it would. We just want to protect women. No, you want to have all the power and the money and have someone cook and clean for free. It's not fair. See, girls are too emotional. That's why boys need to be in charge of things. Closing arguments, please. Ginsburg wrote that the Equal Rights Amendment would ensure each person is judged based on merit and not a trait of birth that doesn't have anything to do or need or ability. Throughout our history, men have been the leaders of our great nation and took on the burden of workplace and on the battlefield in order to spare women. Good job. Thanks. Chad scored 124 points. Shannon scored 98 points. So Chad wins. You should have won. Yeah, you should have. Thanks, but I guess you thought Chad deserved to win too? Um, no. I thought he sounded like a chauvinist pig. Yeah, who cares about points? What about right and wrong? Aw, uh, don't cry about losing. Your husband will take care of you someday, if you can find one. Why did Chad win? Don't you think girls are as good as boys? Shouldn't we have equal rights? I wasn't choosing sides. I just awarded points based on your debate skills. Though I am definitely not a supporter of the Equal Rights Amendment. <laughs> 
How did your debate go? Terrible. I lost and Chad was a jerk. Olive and Heather were really sweet about it, though. Hmm. You don't like them, do you? Well, I've heard what they think about me. It was time again for the creative problem-solving competition. Imagine in 10 years, there's a drought. First, list all the problems that a drought might cause. This year, I managed to get on a team with two other girls. My team scored so well at our school, we were invited again into the citywide competition. So was Chad's all-boys team. Next is a team, pick three of those problems and then write about the possible solutions you can think of. My team took first place, again. Score 144, score 130, score 56. Congratulations. Thank you. You're such a sweetie. Congratulations to you too. Congrats, uh, I mean, see you Monday. We took first place. Congratulations. You don't have to brag. That's great, Shannon. I have to run. Don't forget to play to practice the violin. Winning the competition made me feel great. Violin didn't. I still wanted to be successful, but in the ways that made me feel good. Not in the ways everyone else expected. Chapter 5 Worldly success doesn't matter. What really matters is perfecting ourselves so that one day we might live with God. Yeah, that's what really matters. Wanting to be beautiful or successful or famous is selfish. How do we show God that we love Him? By keeping His commandments. That's right, and also by loving His children. In the stories at church, angels occasionally visited young people and called them to do something special. Could that happen to me? Some Sundays, I left church feeling amazing, full of hope and love. God loves me no matter what, and I love everyone so much. I can show God's love to the entire world by being kind. Please forgive me for all my mistakes. I want to try to be perfect. Maybe if I was good enough? Please help me love others. Heal that love, Shannon. I'm a messenger from heaven. God has chosen you for great work. Work? Uh, how much work? Not a lot of work. A minimal amount of work. Phew. Mostly your heavenly parents just want you to know that you're special. Maybe it's for the best that an angel didn't appear in my room. It's a mess. Hi, Shannon. I'm glad that you won creative problem solving. Didn't you win last year too? You deserve it. You've been the sweetest friend, so you deserve everything. That sounds pathetic, sorry. Do you think that Kate would ever like me? Sometimes it seems like all the boys and none of them like me. Sorry, I'll stop talking about Kay. Right back, Jane. Hi, Jane. You know what? I don't think any of that stuff matters. I'm trying to just be a good person and not worry about boys. And it makes me feel so much better. P.S. Do you want to go to church with me on Sunday? Heavenly Father, please bless that girl. She looks sad. And that boy, too. I wonder if Callie doesn't have any friends. Hey, Callie. You can sit next to me. So, did you do your math homework? Why? Do you need to copy it? No, I already did it. Do you want to hang out with me sometime after school? Sure. There's Shannon. I remember to this day how she was the only person to, in junior high to was, who was kind to me. What an angel. All right, students. Why does my nose always start running in here? Am I allergic to math or something? I hated having to get up and get a tissue from the teacher's desk. Math, math, blah, blah, math. In front of everybody is so embarrassing. Blah, blah, so much math. I would sit in my chair for as long as possible, inhaling through my nose, hoping it would dry on its own. At just the second before the snot dripped out, I get another tissue. Please don't notice that I'm always blowing my nose. Are you sick or something? 
I don't think so. There's old sledge nose. I'll never forget how she's always blowing her nose in junior high math class. It was hard to feel heavenly per perfection when all I could think about was being judged for my runny nose. So this is my room. Kelly wanted to draw while listening to music I'd never heard before. We hung out a couple of times, but we weren't really into the same things. Hi, Shannon. Do you want to play at my house after school today? Right back, Kelly. Plus, she said play instead of hang out, which sounded immature to me. Shannon, my mood ring is blue. I must be excited. What am I excited about? Math? JK, can I copy your math homework real quick? Right back, Nicole. I didn't do it. I don't even know why. I'm so mad at myself. Don't be mad. Cheer up. It's not that easy. Want to go to 7-Eleven with me after school? Yes. I never answered Kelly's note. You're bad. You're bad. You're bad. You're bad. Why am I such a bad person? I should have been a friend to Kelly. But I just gave up when, I, when it got hard. I'm so bad. Are you lost, little boy? Maybe you couldn't find your preschool class. Look, I can pick him up with one arm. Let me go. Maybe I will give you your calculator. Hey, don't be such jerks. Leave him alone or I'll go get the principal. Your babysitter's here. Saved by a girl. Hey, Spencer, are you okay? Why don't you take a pencil and shove it up your butt? I waited for Nicole like she said. Hi Shannon, I don't really know you, but I just wanted to tell you that those guys in history were talking about beating you up after school. I thought you wanted to know. But Nicole never showed up. Now the school was almost empty. No witnesses if those boys were waiting. Hey Shannon, uh, Andre, you scared me. What's going on? Someone said some boys were waiting for me after school. Can I walk you to the bus stop? Well, come on, who's gonna mess with me? Is this cause you stood up for Spencer? I think so. Yeah, I heard about that. Hey, thanks. No problem. It were several blocks to the bus stop and Andre's home was in the opposite direction. Today at school, there were some guys being mean to a little boy and I told them to stop. That's so wonderful, Shannon. That's like saying, hey everybody, I'm really righteous and you should praise me. No, it's not. That's not what I meant. She was right, though. I wanted them to think I was a good person, but I felt ashamed for wanting that. I've been basically feeling the same way for years. You don't have to act like you're better than everybody else. Shut up. Why don't you get mad at her for saying shut up? You guys only ever get mad at me. Goody, goody. There she goes again. Here comes the door slam. I hate you. You're a bad person. Everybody thinks so. Why can't you just let it roll off you? I didn't know why. I wished I could. I tried to hide how it felt. But all the feelings broke out of me. I was older now. Never mind. I was getting better at hiding my emotions. Some days at church, instead of feeling better, I just felt so aware of everything wrong with me. What if there are bad things I've forgotten to repent for? Will God turn me away from heaven? I thought I repented for that time in sixth grade when I was mean to Crystal. But I still feel bad about it, so maybe I need to repent? Heavenly Father, help me remember all my sins so I can repent for everything. What if all my bad feelings are God's way of telling me that I'm bad? I try to be good. Stop it. You stop it. Ow! But instead I felt like I was getting worse. Mom! Please forgive me. I'm bad. I'm so bad. Please, please forgive me. 
Could God really love me when I was always making mistakes? Everyone is always watching you and judging you, waiting for you to mess up so they can make fun of you. My dad got, my dad got a fax machine so my agent can just fax over the sites for my edition. Sides are pages from a script. The part of the little sister in the movie? Olivia thinks she's better than you. She thinks you don't have any talent. You remind me of someone. Oh, I know, Miss Piggy. Why did I say that? Miss Piggy? I mean, not that you look like a pig. That was rude. This isn't the first time you've been rude. Remember when you ignored us at lunch? Oh yeah, she just sat there like she we didn't exist. I didn't hear you. And the time you told Heather that she was gross? Yeah, that was rude. Well, she clipped her nails on the carpet. Are you guys talking about Shannon? And you know, it's obnoxious that you're always like, here's a random fact, aren't I smart? So being smart is bad now? It's like you want people to think you're smarter than them. You guys are being mean. You should learn to take criticism. It's not like you're perfect. Remember that time? She's always. A one time. You deserve this. You deserve to feel bad. They're all a bunch of female dogs anyway. I don't know why you hang out with them. Well, they're not usually... Why are you defending them? What? Did you defend me when Olivia was telling everybody that I'm some ch cheap wench who makes out with guys in hot tubs? Did I? I don't know. I didn't say anything bad about Jane, but did I defend her? And you're always talking about church and stuff. It's so like you're judging me too. Jane, I'm not- never mind. I guess I had been expecting this. France forever was too much to hope for. Andre, everyone's yelling at me. I hate this so much. I lunch, Olivia and Heather and Trish and Denise were just sitting there and telling me all the things that they hate about me. And I think Jane is mad at me. I'm sorry for laying all this on you. It's just that you're the only one I have right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Debating whether or not to give this to you? I don't know. Help me. Right back, Shannon. Without friends on my side, it all started to feel like too much. Hey Shannon. Hi Nicole. So did you do your history homework? Yeah. Great, can I copy it real quick? I don't feel good about cheating. Uh, never mind. Are you friends with her? Sort of. I hate that girl. I done my homework. But I didn't turn it in. When I was little, I didn't question my parents' love for me. Straight A's again, I'm so proud of you. Thanks, Dad. But lately, what my parents said and I heard were different. A's again, I love you. So you love me because I get A's? You're doing so much better in school than your sister did. So I only have value by comparison to someone else's less successful? You should finish your book. It's that one you that award. Since I haven't finished it, I didn't deserve to win. Is your report done yet? I should feel guilty for any waste of time. I only matter when it's productive. Writing books might be a good hobby to do on the side while raising kids. He doesn't really think I can make it as an author. When you wear clothes with your waistband, you look pretty. So I don't look pretty in any other clothes. Well, I'm just gonna stop getting A's and see if dad still loves me anyway. I knew they loved me. I knew they didn't mean to hurt me. But I was an oyster without a shell, a shaved bear. A 13 year old girl. I got a call from the school that you're failing three classes. Um. What's the matter with you? I. Don't know. I don't know. I wish I knew. You'd better get caught up. 
While Dad answered that question, it became our only topic of conversation. Did you do your homework yet? Did you do your homework yet? Hello? Did you do your homework yet? Mom, do you still love me as much as you did when I got all A's? Her mouth twitched. She's disgusted with me. She hates me now. Never mind. Hey, do you want to go to the mall with me after you practice violin? I quit. What? I quit. I'm not playing violin anymore. You can't just quit after eight years. I told Dad this morning. What did he say? That I'll regret it. Who cares? I already regret everything. Shannon. Don't lecture me, Mom. I already know that I'm a terrible person. Dinner's in three hours. Don't come out of your room till you've cleaned it and finished your math homework. Number one, complete three problems on my math worksheet, decide to take a break to clean my room. Two, put away mostly clean socks, find Jojo I thought I lost. Three, put books back in drawer until I haven't looked at my scrapbook for a while. Four, scrapbook reminds me that I should really update my journal. Five, hurry up and put away my, some clothes. Six, under a clothes pile, I find the book I was assigned for English, read part of the first chapter. Shannon, are you cleaning up? Um, yeah. Seven, too hungry to concentrate. Look for old Halloween candy. Eight, make sure to make bed, but feeling too sleepy. Nine, how is it almost dinner time already? Ten, I'm going to fail math. Everything is pointless. Shannon, can you come into my room for a minute? We know you've been having a hard time. We thought you might like a fresh start. I talked to my sister and she said you could live with her for the rest of the school year. And you know how loving she is. I think you could be happy there. What do you think? In California? Wow, I don't know. Pray and think about it. Help me to know if finishing junior high in California would be a good idea. Such a huge change felt both scary and exciting. We're overjoyed to have you here, Shannon. Yay! You can tell me anything, anytime. I always want to know what you're feeling. Want to have a readathon thon with snacks? Um, definitely. Shannon? Amy? Amy and I had been really good friends in elementary school till she moved to California. That's right, Amy goes to my cousin's school. Starting a new school wouldn't feel intimidating if I already had a good friend. Amy, guess what? I might go live with my aunt, the one who lives near you. That's so rad. And then I'd go to school with you. My school? Yeah, will you tell me your schedule? I'd love to have as many classes with you as possible and for sure be on the same lunch. Amy? I'm here. So what do you think? Well, that's cool. It's just I have new friends here. I mean, it'd be cool to see around and stuff, but... Oh, okay. I fight with my mom, who loves me and does so much for me. Why am I mean to my little sister? Am I a mean person? Instead of just being happy for Olivia, I feel jealous. I should have stood up for Jane. Worrying about being beautiful is vanity, and that's bad. I should be getting A's. What's wrong with me? I quit violin, and that makes me a quitter. So how will I do anything in life? I want to be more than a homemaker. Is that wicked? Am I a wicked woman's liber? I thought that maybe this is how I was supposed to feel. How girls were supposed to feel. Don't get a big head. Don't think well of yourself. Don't feel proud or sad or worried. Don't feel. My body ached like I was always coming down with a cold. So I started to stay home from school. I was tired of being 13. I was tired of trying to be old. 
I just wanted to feel safe, like a little kid again. She's in 8th grade, always struggled, worries a lot. But she's been more depressed lately, affecting her schoolwork. Okay, thanks, bye. Shannon, I want to talk to you about something. I just made an appointment for you to see a psychiatrist. I don't know anyone who goes to a psychiatrist. There's something wrong with you. There's something really wrong. I didn't tell my friends. I was afraid they'd think I was crazy. But I figured seeing a psychiatrist was an experience I could draw on something if I became a writer. So I took notes. Heart shared, don't get comfortable. Dusty wicked chicken, decoration? Painting of boat. Don't you feel calm now? No magazines, to make sure you'd be alone with your thoughts. Shannon? So tell me what's going on. Maybe he's writing a book too. I was careful to act like I was totally fine. My mom is worried about me because I'm not getting good grades. So I tried to admit to just enough so he wouldn't think I was hiding worse parts. What's your relationship like with your father? Pretty good. I think he cares more about having a son than having daughters. But it's not a big deal. Do you have friends? Uh Uh-huh. Sometimes we get into fights, but we work it out. It was easy for me. Maybe my experience in drama class helped me to be better at pretending. Have you been feeling sadder than normal? Well, sure. I didn't make the school play and some other stuff I was hoping for. Maybe next year. Or maybe just acting my way through junior high has been enough. Well, Shannon, I think we're done here. You seem like a normal teen with normal teen problems. Victory. But then? He didn't see through me. He didn't help me. Now I was stuck with all this. When I was two years old, my family went on a hike. My parents said that I cried and cried. I didn't want to be carried. I didn't want water. I just cried like I never stop. At first they were sorry for me, but after a while they got frustrated. I was ruining the hike. Why couldn't I just be happy? But then they noticed that my knee was full of cactus needles. I've been too little to explain. I hadn't known that I was in pain. All I could do was cry. I couldn't explain how I felt then, and I wasn't much better at it now. The psychiatrist didn't find the cactus needles. He couldn't pull them out. Was I just going to keep feeling sad all the time and never stop? Why couldn't I just be happy? He said I'm fine. Shannon, I'll go do my homework. Chapter 7 What if I had been totally honest? What if I talked to someone who really understood? I don't know what's wrong with me. Well, I can answer that. You've been keeping track of your weaknesses for years. Hey, read this. Will it fix me? No, but you'll know everything that's wrong with you. I feel bad all the time. Want me to fix you, right? Boodily, bowdy, boop. There, you're fixed. Um, I don't think that's how it works. Maybe not every doctor is perfect for everyone. But there might be someone out there who could really help me. So, Shannon, tell me what's going on. I feel sad a lot. She'll probably say that everyone feels bad sometimes and just get over it. That sounds really hard. Yeah, it is hard. What if I was able to tell her how I feel like and I have and I have to punish myself by constantly remembering and th- remembering every bad thing I've ever done. How no matter what I do, I can't stop feeling bad. How all I want to do is cry all the time, but I feel like I'm not supposed to. How I just want to lie down and sleep and never do anything again. How I have to hide my feelings or people will make fun of me. What if she listened and she cared? What do you wish I would say to you? That everything will be okay. 
If I did, would you believe it? People say that all the time, but they really don't know. I guess I wish you'd say that I'm not alone. You're not alone, Shannon. I hope I'm not. But I think I am. I feel alone. Like, here I am, alone, right this second. It's hard to feel like that. But the truth is, you've never been alone. We're commanded to be perfect. But of course that's not possible. No one is perfect. But we have to hope and try. Some days it felt like impossible to accept myself in all my imperfection. But I did try. And I started to believe that really that was enough. On my birthday, Jane decorated my locker. For Shannon, my sister had a bouquet of balloons delivered to me in my seventh period class. Happy birthday, Shannon. Thanks. I was 14 years old. Happy birthday, Shannon. Thank you. And I felt different. Happy birthday, thing, thing. Thanks. A little more confident. A little more hopeful than before. Happy birthday! Heather, Olivia, and I decorated one of another rooms for our birthdays. After our fight, I thought they might skip me. We're so sorry, Shannon. Yeah, it was really rude that way we piled on you. It's okay. Happy birthday, dear Shannon. Laura and I stayed up late, late playing games in my room. Oh, I know this one. And that weekend I had a party. Chicken, sticky armpits, singing in the rain. It was the best birthday I ever had. On your way to science? Um, yeah. Check under the desk. Shannon, I know far and wide as kind of a woman, does hereby declare her desire to keep Andre, the Nod Giant, as one of her best friends. She doth express many apologies for ignoring him, recently and for any other way she may have wronged him. She doth also kindly request, one, that they talk about more than how gorgeous Christy is, two, that Andre, the not giant, asks Shannon about her life sometimes and not only favors related to getting Christy to go with him. Right back, Shannon. Shannon. JK Shannon. Heck yeah, right back. Andre, your forever friend, P.S. Christy said that you said nice things about me, even when we weren't friends, and that convinced her that I'm a good guy. And now we're going together. And that's all I'm going to say about Christy, pinky swear. But a couple weeks after my birthday came Valentine's Day. Hi, can we interrupt? We have flower grams to deliver. Oh. Who sent it? Was it Chad? Three of mine were anonymous. All five of mine were from Liam. He's so sweet. I kind of thought maybe Anthony would bring me a Valentine's card. He didn't. Did Kevin send you any of your roses? No. I'm so done with him. Do you have any plans tonight? Of course not. Do you want to be sad loners on Valentine's Day together? Of course, yes. We sat in the back room because it felt more pathetic. Sparkling apple juice, cheap convenience store chocolates. Who needs boys? Not us. Maybe life was just going to be like that. Great days and terrible days. Up and down, up and down. Not good forever, but not bad forever either. Having good friends helped. And also chocolate, lots of chocolate. Happy Valentine's Day to my sweet daughter, love, dad. It was hard to be patient with myself, patient with all the emotions, the confusion, the sadness. I like this quote by Victor Hugo, have courage for the great sorrows of life and patience for the small ones. But I was trying. It was easier in days when I could focus on doing things I really loved, like when we performed our drama showcase. A teacher chose the best scenes from the year to perform the whole school. 
Oscar. In this school, young ladies, you will do as I say. On my own. Shannon, are you still in the kitchen? We're waiting for the cake. We were amazing, if I do say so myself. We did a second show that night for our families. After, our parents let us go alone to celebrate. Ah, oh, this gong feels like baking grease on my face. You could have washed it off. But I'm too lazy. I think I look smashing. Maybe I'll start wearing makeup all the time. You do look like a precious, precious doll. Why, thank you, madam. Oscar, look at the mess you made. You're amazing tonight, darling. Well, you were spectacular, dearest. Why, we're both more talented than... than Calvin College put together. Get in here, Shannon. Say cheese. It felt like a family. A messy, weird family. All as imperfect as me. It seems a shame to be in costume and makeup, but with no audience. All dressed up and nowhere to go. Indeed, we must bring a little joy into people's humdrum's lives. So we decided to do our duty to entertain the traffic. Because the world is a stage, and we, we are all actors. Hey, hey, you're home, come join us. That's when Shannon felt like a cactus, and we didn't know what was wrong. Remember that story, Shannon? Yeah, yeah, I remember. I thought Dad told the story to poke fun at me when I was always crying. But then he said, Brave little thing was hurting, and we couldn't figure out why. What a bunch of dopes. The end.